Well, hello, people. It is Richard McCann here with the wonderful Winston Ben Clements. Got to get that right. We've just shared the stage here in Leeds at the Professional Speaking Association of Yorkshire, and it has been an absolute privilege because this guy has got one hell of a cracking story. Winston, as you can see, is slightly different to me. For the start, he's not ginger. <laughs> but I, I, what I was, I don't know about you, my friend, but what I was blown away by was the fact that what you won't know is he does this exercise, don't you? And about, will you tell what's the exercise? Yeah, it's an exercise on reframing. So this is where we look at seemingly negative situations and we try to see where the opportunity might lie behind the obstacle. Absolutely, that's kind of similar to what I talk about. And uh, what, what was really great though was on the branding. On, in fact, I've got it here. <laughs> Just to demonstrate it. He's got a, he's got a what do you call that? A, uh, a looking glass. Is that what they call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, magnifying glass then to suit. Uh, and I happened to bring mine with me today for the very first time that's never been brought with me was at home and the reason I brought it is I talked about as a speaker, as a professional speaker, having to become a bit of a detective and and look for those opportunities. I think that applies to not just speakers but anybody in business. In mm -hmm. life in general. Yeah. We didn't plan this either, did we? No, absolutely she just off the, off the, well, not off the cuff. Not, it is off the cuff, actually. Serendipity. It, it is serendipity. What I'd like to ask you about, because it's a new thing to me, and I'm sure mm. it might be new to a lot of people, is mm. that thing that you spoke about, which actually stops me in my tracks, in my thought tracks mm. anyway. Mm. You said that you took extreme ownership mm. of your disability. Mm. Explain. <laughs> yeah, and it's a bit of a confrontational statement to make. I think I've said it before to audiences and I've seen, you know, the look of shock on their faces because how can you say that you are responsible for a disability? How can you say that you're responsible for a tragic situation that happened in your past, right? Sure. But I think the power of extreme ownership, which is what I was explaining today to this amazing group, was that, you know, when life happens to you, when you get hit by adversity, by challenges, in that moment, you've only got two options. There's only two types of mindsets that you can apply. And you could sit back and play the victim and say, hey, it's true, I am disabled, and because of that, I'm just going to take the excuse on a silver platter and not look to better myself, not look to achieve anything. But I believe the true power of extreme ownership is where you can actually take, look back and say, well, it is true, I haven't been dealt the best of cards, but how can I find a way to win with what I've got? Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. And it's, it's great. And I think, as you pointed out when we spoke afterwards, Immediately, I, I've kind of done that, haven't I? I've taken, well, but you can... Yeah, 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 and, and, and I, exactly. And I think that's another maybe piece of synchronicity as well, because I guess we come from backgrounds that many people would consider perhaps unique. You know, me with my disability, brittle bones, and which is a fairly rare condition, and all the physical trauma that I had to endure, especially when I was younger, you know, 150 broken bones by age 12. Not, not the kind of statistics that you want to be hitting at that age um yeah how many bones do we have in the body <laughs> i mean a lot of them were repetition, repetition. right yeah, yeah so my limbs took a battering um ribs you know things like sneezing um really? we'll bone. yeah turning in bed you know i've had unfortunate situations where somebody has gone to pick me up you know just as you would with a kid and it's ended up causing me a broken bone so Interesting. Fairly, yeah, fairly unpleasant situations, and then what I was getting to was your situation as well. I mean, you know, you can share a bit of your story as well, but I feel like you've been able to take ownership mm. of some of the challenges and some of the massive, unthinkable trauma that you've had to endure. Yes, yes, thank you for that, Winston. Yeah. So you just brought to mind, and I was, this is off the cuff, so we didn't plan this. Yeah. I read a book many years ago called Strong at the Broken okay. Places. Okay. Have you come across that? No, not yet. It's this notion that when you break a bone and mm. it heals, it becomes stronger mm, at mm, the mm. broken place. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know how true that is, but it was like an analogy, mm, and mm. it must be true because that was the title of the book. Mm, but that, mm, that was about mm, trauma, mm, mm, that was about adversity, mm. and in a lot of cases, people that go through situations, yeah. it brings a, a strength yeah. in people that they wouldn't have had had yeah. they not been through that thing. So do you know what? It was fantastic to meet you here today. Yeah, and, and I have to say we had Sue as well. Sue, Sue actually spoke a little bit about, if you probably can't see her in the shop, but Sue spoke about stresses in the workplace, but you synchronistically talked about taking extreme ownership of when people drop litter on the floor, rather than being annoyed at that litter, go and pick that litter up yourself, I thought that was beautiful by the way. So, um, so I, I love the fact that Winston was speaking here today, and Sue, because Sue, fantastic speaker, and 
I've actually asked him to come and speak for me at the I Can event, because if you're looking for an I Can story, we've got one right in front of us. And, Thank uh, you, sir. It's a few months away, because I've just put the date in the diary, it's the 4th of April 2020, so you're not going to be 44 that year, are you? Because I've got a thing about 44, <laughs> you know, you'll be 22, won't you? I'll be, I'll be 14 again. You mentioned, actually, just before we finish, you mentioned that you were a millennial. Yeah. Forgive me, educate me. W what does that mean? What, what period of... I think, oh, you're putting me on the spot now, I think it's 1983 to 2000 or something, I don't know, yeah. So you, no were, bo you were born in uh, 92, what year were you born? I was born in 1986. 80s, the year I left school. There you go. A cracking See? year for both of us. And uh, listen, we better go now, but uh, extreme ownership, fantastic, inspirational, uh, have a fantastic day, evening, morning, wherever you are on this wonderful thing called planet Earth. Thank you so much, guys. Right, we're recording now. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm so glad I sat in for this, because it was great to see you as interviewer.